Morning students, uh, this is the first lesson of method of joints. There's the frame from page six of the first document, principle of moments. Um, if you remember, well, I'm assuming because you went through it, uh, we use the principle of moments to find these reactions here because whenever you solve a frame, okay, solving a frame means um, find the size of the forces in all the members and also whether the forces in the members are tension or compression, which we call the nature of the forces, okay? Now, we found that VB was 1 kN downwards, VA was 23 kN upwards, and HA, which is horizontal at A, vertical at A, vertical B, at B. People, can I just give you some advice here? A lot of people call this RVB and ABC and XYZ and 007, James one blah, blah, blah. Don't do that, okay? Just call it vertical B. Call it something simple that you know. Okay? I mean, some students give it all fancy names and as they do calculations, when they get to the end, they don't know what's V and what's A and AB and RB, and, and then I get confused too. Okay? So just call it vertical at B, V at A, and HA. Okay? So, whenever we solve a frame, the first thing we need to do is find the reactions. Okay? And just a bit of revision again. If you haven't quite noticed yet, we took moments about the pin joint first. Okay, now are you listening carefully? Are you tuning in? We took moments about A to find the reaction at B. Did you, did you get that? We took in moments at A to find the reactions at B. Then we took moments at B to find the reactions at A. You can't take moments about the point and find the forces at that point. Why not? Because if you take moments about this point, for example, there, VA and HA is acting through A, so therefore, and its lever arms will be zero, so you can't determine the forces at the point you take in moments about. I'll say that again. So take moments about A to find VB, take moments about VB to find VA, and then we sum the horizontal forces, and we determine HA. Okay? Right, that's how we got the reactions there. Now, people, I'm going to do, I'm going to take a few of these joints here. Now, if you cast your mind back to solving forces around a joint, as we did in the previous week, this is what we're going to do now, but we're going to go to every joint and just set, and just repeat that procedure over and over every time. Okay, right. Next point. You can only start at the joint where there's not more than two unknowns. Now, in real life, if we take member AB, for example, or in, in real life, this frame AC is actually one member in real life. But when we analyze it, AG is a member, GB is a member, and BC is a member. Okay, so that's member AF, that's member FE, member ED, and that's member CD. That one is member FG, GE, EB, DB, and so on. So this frame is made up of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 members. Okay. Even though FD is one member in real life, FD is made up of two members. Even though in real life AC is one member, in real life it's made up of AG, GB, and BC. And we analyze it as single members. Okay. And one day, and when you get to toss next time around, um, when you use the Procon, uh, when you use the program called Procon, Procon does it the same way. Okay. Member by member. So, we can only start at the joint where there's not more than two unknowns. Now, if I look at joint A, AF is an unknown, AG is an unknown, so we can start there. Can we go to joint F? We got FA is an unknown, FG is an unknown, FE is an unknown. No, we can't go there. Let's look at joint G. Member AG is an unknown, FG is unknown, GE is unknown, GB is unknown. We have four unknowns. We cannot solve that. Okay. We can go there. Can we go there? No. Can we go there? No. No. Can we go there? Yes. We've only got two as unknowns. But we normally start at the left hand end normally, and we work our way to the right and end. Okay, so notice, if we start at joint A, from joint A we can determine the forces in AF and AG, 
and from there we're going to go to join, join F because AF at this point will be known. Those two will be unknown, so now we can go to join AF, sorry, join F to, to determine FE and FG and so on and so on. So you can see that when we start here, we pro make a slow progress throughout to the right of the truss, and once we get to join C there, the truss will be completely solved. Job done. Okay, right, let's start at joint A. For a start, I'm going to draw joint A big first, resolve the forces, and work on that. Right, so I'm going to say at joint A. Right, I'm going to draw it out quickly. Um, let me have a go at this. Um, let me see, joint A. Right. There's a G. There's the member a F. Hi right, people, what have I done? I've taken joint A. Okay, I've taken joint A. And I've just exploded over there. Okay, and notice also, I've drawn all the forces and the reactions at the joint there. A lot of students, when they come here, they leave at HA, and they get it wrong. All forces must be accounted for. So I'm going to say 9.24 kilonewtons. And this is going to be 23 kilonewtons. And that's A, and F, and G. People, are you tuning in? You should be. Now, if I'm just writing this in there to know that this member A, F, and A, G. But if in real life, it's actually far, it's five meters away. Okay? So this little bit of, this segment of A, F is the lower end of A, F. And this segment here is the left and end of AG. G is far to the right, and F is far up in the sky. It's five meters away. I'm not concerned with what's happening at the upper end of F. I'm not concerned with what's happening at the right and end of G. I'm only concerned with what's happening at the bottom of AF. I'm only concerned with what's happening at the left and end of G. Okay? Let it sink in. Right. Next step. We need to assume whether forces in AF and AG is tension or compression. We don't know what they are. The question is, determine the size of the forces and determine the nature of the forces. Right. I'm going to assume that AG is um, in tension. So, remember, tension is pulling away from the joint. Is it ringing bells? Okay. Don't do that. That will confuse you. Don't do that. Okay. We're only considering the left and end of the member, and if it's in tension, it's pulling away from the joint. And AF, I'm going to assume it is being compression. Okay. Right. Think back to what we did in class earlier. Any forces that's not vertical or not horizontal, we're going to resolve into its components. So I'm going to resolve AF into its components. So it's going to look like that. I'm going to look like that. Right. So the angle inside there is 60. So that is 60. So that's going to be AF cos 60. AF cos 60. And that is AF times the sine of the same angle. Right. Do I resolve that one there? No. It's horizontal. I leave as is. Right. The next thing we do is we solve vertical forces, we solve horizontal forces, and solve for the unknowns AF and AG. Normally, I start with the verticals first, normally. It doesn't matter, but I'm going to say the sum of the forces in the vertical is equal to zero. OK. 
Okay, let me just change this quickly here. Yeah? Right. How many vertical forces do we have acting at joint A? That one and that one. So it's plus and minus. Doesn't matter the order. Take them all. I'm going to start with the pluses first as usual. So it's 23 minus AF sine 60. By the way, I said the sum of the forces in the vertical plane is equal to zero. Why is it equal to zero? Because this joint here is in equilibrium. Okay? The truss isn't going anywhere, so, so the net result is equal to zero. So the sum of the forces is equal to zero. There we have our first equation. We've got one unknown, therefore we can solve for AF. So therefore AF is equal to... I get 26.56, so it's 26.56. You know the measurement? Kilonewton. If you leave it out, take up a mark. Right. What does the question want us to determine? It wants us to determine the size of the force. There's the size of the force. And the question also wants us to determine the nature of the force, whether it's tension or compression. Right. Because the answer is positive, our assumption that AF is in compression is in fact correct. Okay, so it's pushing down, it's pushing toward the joint, it's pushing toward the joint, therefore AF is in compression. And I put C in brackets to say compression. My first member has been solved. Okay, right. I am going to, are we done? No, we need to solve for AG. So we say the sum of the forces in the horizontal plane is equal to zero. How many horizontal forces do we have acting about joint G? One, two, three. Plus, plus, minus. So it's 9.24. It doesn't matter the order. Just take all of them. 9.24 plus AG minus AF cos 60. But we know what AF is, you know. We know what AF is. I'm going to write as AF cos 60 is equal to zero. All right. Why is it equal to zero? Because the sum of the forces in the horizontal plane is equal to zero. It's equal to zero because this whole joint is in equilibrium. All right. I have an equation. Can I solve it? Yes, I can solve it because AF we know from there. So therefore, we can make AG the subject of the formula. All right, let's do that. And I get 4.04 .04 kilonewtons. And because our answer is positive, what does it mean? It means that our assumption that AG is intention is in fact correct. So I say tension. And if I go to my sketch there, it's tension. If I've got a negative answer, what does it mean? It means that this is not intention, AG is actually in compression, if that was the case, but it's positive. So AG is intention. So people, we went, we visited the first joint. We've we've written all the reactions in. Okay, we've resolved forces that are not vertical or horizontal. So we resolve F, AF into its components, like we've done a few weeks ago. And then we solved vertically to find AF. There's the size of the force in AF. It was positive, so it's compression. We've solved horizontal forces at, at A. AG is found to be 4.04 kilonewtons. And because it is positive, we say it's in tension. So people, that's the first joint done the first two members done. Okay, I'll start in the next lesson and I'll go to joint F, draw that out and follow exactly the same procedure. See you in the next lesson.